good morning now we will be discussing in the second part of segment relationships with oral cavity so we already discussed it, exogenous segmentation and the first part of endogenous segmentation based on the color so now we will be discussing about the various other endogenous segmentation which is based on their location so we already started discussing about endogenous segmentation so as a recap we already discussed exogenous what are exogenous pigmentation what are the factors which causes exogenous pigmentation and when a patient comes to the clinic with a pigmented lesion on the oral cavity or peri oral tract what all we have to ask in the history and during examination what all we have to check first we already said about examination we have to check the color of the lesion and we discuss various pigments which causes pigmentation in the oral and peri oral tract and how will that lesion will appear now we will be discussing about the location of various pigmented lesion so while discussing about location we get classify the pigmentation into localized lesions and generalized lesions in localized lesions exogenous pigmentation comes under local localized lesion and in endogenous pigmentation focal pigmentation comes under localized lesion first one is epilepsy or Pickle. This is very common in white people, and we also sometimes we also have this epilepsy or freckle, which is a common benign pigmentation. It is asymptomatic. They are usually small and well circumscribed. It is tan or brown color, which is darker on prolonged sun exposure. It is mostly developmental in origin. It is due to increased melanin production, but there will not be any increase in the number of melanocytes. Next one is melanotic macules. These are all benign pigmentation. Melanotic macules is small, well circumscribed, brown to black pigmented area. It commonly occurs uh, in most people, and it commonly occurs in the lips and gingiva, followed by the palate and buccal mucosa. Melanotic macule has a female red lipstick. Next one is nevus. Nevus are the benign neoplasms of cutaneous melanocytes. They are small well circumscribed macules but commonly appear as slightly red macules sometimes they can be well circumscribed flat lesion but sometimes it can also appear as slightly red much smaller lesion than the macule they are brown bluish gray or almost black and occasionally appear as non pigmented lesion they are less common in the oral mucosa comparing to the skin So these are different pictures of nevus. We already study about in detail about nevus in oral pathology. So there are so many types: general nevus and all. We already studied that in oral pathology. So just in relation to oral pigmentation, we just we have to know that there are benign neoplasms of the melanocytes. They are mostly asymptomatic. Next one is oral melanocytoma. It is a common Pigmentation which is seen in the oral cavity. They are direct. They are benign pigmented, brown to brown to brownish black color, and well circumscribed lesion. In uh, white people, they are rare, but in uh, dark people or dark skin people, it is a common lesion. The most common in oral cavity is buccal mucosa, lips, palate, and gingiva. The average age of presentation is. Twenty-eight years. Next one is post inflammatory melanosis. As the name suggests, this pigmentation occurs after if there is the the what any inflammatory reaction. So in oral mucosa, the most common inflammatory reaction that occurs in oral mucosa is an allergic reaction that is lichen planus. So post inflammatory melanosis or post inflammatory pigmentation is mostly seen in. Like in plants, there are multiple brownish black pigmented area adjacent to vesicular erosive or vesicular lesions, like as in oral like in plants, and also it is seen in pemphigus or pemphigoid. Next one is tumor masses. Tumor masses also appear localized comparing to the generalized lesions. So the most common pigmented tumor is malignant melanoma. Which is also known as black gum. 
they are asymptomatic slow growing brown or black patch with asymmetric irregular borders or it can also appear as a rapidly enlarging mass associated with the ulceration bleeding pain and bone destruction the most common site is heart palate and gingiva and they are malignant as the name suggests so malignant melanoma is less than 1% of all oral malignancies they are characterized by proliferation of malignant melanocytes along the junction between epithelial and connective tissue as well as within the connective tissue so malignant melanoma can appear at the junction of epithelial and connective tissue and also appear within the connective tissue the various risk factors for malignant melanoma is multiple episodes of acute sun exposure immune suppression there is if there is a positive family history of malignant melanoma if there is presence of multiple cutaneous nevi and the oral pathogens or oral risk factor for oral malignant melanoma is unknown <clears throat> it is commonly seen between 4th and 7th decades of life and more common in men than in women and it has a prolonged radial growth phase followed by a vertical growth phase so it enlarges horizontally first then enlarges vertically downwards the staging of malignant melanoma is known as class classification there are five levels or five stages in class classification first one the malignant melanocytes are confined to the epithelium or the epidermis second one the malignant cells are penetrating into the papillary dermis in the third type the malignant cells are filling the papillary dermis in fourth one it extends into the reticular dermis and in the fifth stage which is the most problematic stage it invades the subcutaneous tract so these are the five levels of malignant melanoma according to class classification so the criteria for the clinical diagnosis of malignant melanoma is known as a b c d e rule a stands for asymmetric that is if there is malignant melanoma the one half of the lesion does not match with the other half of the lesion you can see in the picture if the picture if the lesion is divided into two bisected and the one half is not matched with the other half of the lesion b for border irregularity that the edges are not smooth they are not ragged or blurred border third one is color irregularity which is a lesion in the same lesion there is different colors in different areas that is the pigmentation is ranging or varies from black to brown tan red blue and white within a same lesion that is there is color irregularity <clears throat> third one is diameter in a malignant melanoma the diameter will be more than 6 mm as they see the size of a pencil eraser next one is evolving surface or evolving or surface elevation the lesion is not flat it elevated at the surface that it changes with respect to color size shape surface and distance so this is the a b c d e rule for the diagnosis of malignant melanoma the types of malignant melanoma there are mainly five types first one superficial spreading then nodular melanoma lenticular malignant melanoma acral lenticular melanoma mucosal lenticular melanoma this acral lenticular and mucosal lenticular melanoma are the most common type that are seen in oral care so the treatment protocol for malignant melanoma is very surgery combined therapy and palliative therapy so in surgery and confirming in surgery and radio chemo and immunotherapy chemotherapy we can give interleukin and for immunotherapy we can give interleukin and other cytokines and there is palliative chemotherapy first other methods are the novel methods like gene therapy and biologic response modifiers so this is the treatment protocol for malignant melanoma next 
localized tumor is melanotic neuroectodermal tumor of infancy. It, as the name suggests, it's commonly seen in infants. So it is a distinctive neoplasm of the early infancy with rapid expansive growth. The lesion affects the maxilla of infants during the first year of life. It is soft and rapidly growing pigmented swelling. In the diagnosis, for the diagnosis of a melanotic neuroectodermal tumor of infancy, the pathonomic feature is high urinary level of VMA, that is 3 methoxy 4 hydroxy mandelic acid. So, urinary levels of VMA will be very high, which is the pathonomic characteristic diagnosis feature of melanotic neuroectodermal tumor of infancy. Now, moving on to diffuse lesions of the diffuse oral pigmented oral and periodic pigmented lesions. First one is physiologic pigmentation. As the name suggests, it is not pathologic. It is physiologic and commonly seen in all individuals. It is common in it is due to the increase in the production of melanic pigment. It is more commonly seen in dark skinned individuals. It is light brown to almost black in color. And the most common location for physiological pigmentation is attached to Hintega. Now, syndrome associated pigmentation. So, we already discussed the, the color of the pigmentation. In examination part, we already discussed the color of the pigmentation and location of the pigmentation. So, in location of the pigmentation, there are localized and Generalized. In localized pigmentation, there are focal pigmentations like epilis, fractal, nevus, etc. And there is tumor masses like malignant melanoma and neuroectodermal tumor of infancy. So now we will be discussing about syndrome associated pigmentation, which is a diffuse pigmentation. So diffuse pigmentation is into physiological pigmentation, which we already discussed. And next one is Syndrome associated pigmentation. So, in syndrome associated pigmentation, there is a particular entity which is known as cafe olive spot. The meaning of the word cafe olive is coffee with hot milk added, which suggests the color of the pigmentation. So, it appears as a coffee with hot milk added color. And it is seen. So, most commonly seen in neurofibromatosis. So, the cafe or like spot in neurofibromatosis is regular with the mood borders. It crosses the midline and it is like the coast of California. So, this is the coast of California and its map. You can see in the picture is the coast of California is very regular in at its, at its borders. So, the cafe or like uh, neurofibromatosis resemble that of coast of California. The neurofibromatosis is also known as von ruckling person disease of the skin. There will be multiple neurofibroma. The other diagnostic feature of neurofibromatosis is Krausen, which is the axillary pressure. The other one is Lisch nodules. Lish nodules are the translucent brown pigmented spots on iris. So, von ruckling percent disease of the skin or von ruckling uh, or neurofibromatosis is diagnosed by a triad of multiple neurofibroma, crowd sign disease, clarification, and lish nodules, which are the brown pigmented lesions in the iris, and also cafe or light spots, which are with the, which causes midline and with regular smooth borders. Next one is Mechine Albright syndrome. In Mechine Albright syndrome, the cafe olive spot is with irregular markings and also seen as 10 or 12 maxillae. They are rough on palpation and it reaches till the middle. It will not cross the middle as in neurofibromatosis and it resembles the cost of mean. You can see the cost of mean has an irregular border. So, in McKinney Albright syndrome, resembles cost of mean, whereas neurofibromatosis resembles cost of California, which has regular smooth border. So, 
these are the main difference in the appearance of cafe olive spots and cafe olive spots in neurofibromatosis and McKinney Albright syndrome. So in neurofibromatosis, it is regular cross system is like with a smooth palpation and smooth borders. In McKinney Albright syndrome, they are irregular, rough on palpation will not cross the middle and we can cross the middle. So McKinney Albright syndrome is polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia, cafe olive spots and multiple endocrine fibrous spots. McKinney Albright syndrome is the triad of polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia, cafe olive spots and multiple endocrine fibrous so as it uh, as it already mentioned, it is polyosteotic that is multiple bones are affected, and there will be a toxic deformity of long bones. If there is polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia and cafe olive bones, it is known as Jacket Lichenstein syndrome. So McKinney Albright syndrome without multiple endocrine disorders. So for only polyosteotic fibrous dysplasia and cafe olive bones. The syndrome is different, that is, that is like a same syndrome, it is very <coughs> important. So, these are the diseases which are commonly associated with the cafe olive syndrome. Most important one we already discussed, that is, neurofibromatosis and McKinney Albright syndrome. The other diseases are familial cafe olive sports, Sanconis anemia, colorectal, hereditary non polyposis colorectal cancer. Nunan syndrome, tuberous sclerosis, and surface syndrome. These are very important to know. <coughs> Next is huge Jagger syndrome. It is an autosomal dominant genetic condition. There is perioral pigmentation that of 1 to 4 millimeters, brown to blue, they macule primarily on the vermilion border. So, perioral pigmentation is the diagnostic feature of. Is the center as you can see in the picture. There will be freckles in the extremities and multiple in the spinal cord. So, perioral pigmentation with freckles in the extremities and multiple in the spinal cord are the diagnostic triad for huge jugular center. So, in huge jugular center, there are, there are intraoral, intranasal, congestive, and rectal pigmented lesions as well as spots localized on the acral surface. The oral lesions are denied and histologically characterized by increased number of increasing melanin without increased number of melanocytes. So, production of melanin is greater, but there is no increase in the number of melanocytes. So, as the age increases, there will be a fading or disappearance of the spots. Next one is leopard syndrome. Leopard syndrome is characterized by lentigen, electrocardiographic abnormalities, ocular hypothyroidism, pulmonic stenosis, abnormalities of genitalia, retardation of growth and death. So leopard syndrome is it, is, it, is, it constitutes around seven conditions. Next one is Logia Hansinger syndrome. It's an idiopathic pigmented syndrome. That is, there will be diffuse hyperpigmentation of oral mucosa and longitudinal melanocytia. They are asymptomatic, length shaped, or linear, brown to black mucocutaneous matter. So, you can see in the picture there is hyperpigmentation of the tongue and longitudinal melanocytia, longitudinal lines on the nail. And perioral pigmented. They are idiopathic, they are asymptomatic and there will be length shaped macule less than 5 mm in diameter. It can occur as a single lesion or well defined with an indistinct margin or it can occur spontaneously also. They are permanent, it will not fade by age. So these are the symptoms associated with the pigmentation. Next one is endocrine or systemic diseases associated pigmentation. First one is, as we all know, jaundice. Jaundice is the yellowish discoloration of perioral, oral, and tissues and eyes. 
is due to liver disorder and it causes improper metabolism of the bile taken. We already discussed yellow color is given by bilirubin, which is a bile taken. And don't be due to excess bilirubin in the blood cell. There will be deposition of bile taken in the skin and oral mucous membrane. Next one is Addison disease. Addison disease causes bronzing of the skin. There will be generalized hyperpigmentation, which is known as bronzing of skin. There will be sudden onset of oral pigmentation followed by skin hyperpigmentation. It is due to increased levels of ACTO. So, increased levels of adrenocorticotropic hormone stimulates the melanin receptors and there will be increased production of melanin, which causes the hyperpigmentation of the skin. So, these are the pigmentations of the oral and perioral soft tissue. Now, we will be discussing about the intrinsic pigmentations of the skin. First one, gender species for cyanotin or phyria. So there will be, as, as the name suggests, there will be reddish brown color. It is also known as erythrodontia or red tooth. It is due to porphyric deposition. Next one is alcaptonuria or phenyl ketonuria. That is blackish discoloration of the teeth. It is due to inborn error in the metabolism of tyrosine. And there is, it is due to homogenistic acid deposition. So there will be inborn error in the metabolism of tyrosine and homogenistic acid deposition, which results in black color, tongue, and urine, that is alcaptonuria or female ketonuria. Next one is internal resorption or traumatized state, which we usually see in our clinical practice mostly it is very common that is a single tooth will be discolored like traumatized mostly due to trauma due to pulpal hemorrhage products and the tooth will be non vital it is known as pink tooth of mammary so that is internal resorption or traumatized tooth tooth appears pink in color due to the pulpal hemorrhage products Next one, most common condition, that is enamel hypoplasia. So, in enamel hypoplasia, there is environmental and hereditary. Dental fluorosis is a type of enamel hypoplasia due to environmental factors like fluorine, excess fluorine in the drinking water. And it is endemic. It is seen in a region. There will be family history of dental fluorosis. There is a hereditary type of enamel hypoplasia which is defective enamel formation which is known as amelogenesis imperfecta. It is congenited. It affects both primary and permanent dentition. Radiographically, there will be loss of enamel. So, in the radiograph, you can see the enamel covering of the tooth is lost. That is amelogenesis imperfecta. Next one is dendinogenesis imperfecta. It is also hereditary. There will be, the symptom will be hypersensitivity of the tooth. And the dendrin will be opalescent. That is transparent, translucent. And there will be blue sclera if it is associated with the bone deformity. If it affects the bone also, there will be blue colored sclera. In radiograph, there will be multiple pulpal exposure. So there will be defective. Dendrin formation exposing the pulp. Then dendrin dysplasia. Dendrin dysplasia is a condition in which the teeth will be having brown discoloration. The no primary and permanent dentition will be clinically normal, but in radiograph there will be crystal shaped tooth or tulip shaped teeth. Okay. You can see in the radiograph. So while talking about Pigmentation. Pigmentation is broadly classified. Pigmented lesions of the oral cavity is broadly classified as physiological and pathological. Physiological pigmentation we already discussed. It is a diffuse pigmentation which commonly seen in the gym and more common in dark skinned people. 
then pathological pigmentation. Pathological pigmentation is again classified as exogenous and endogenous pigmentation. Exogenous pigmentation, as we discussed first, it is basically we get uh, whether it is exogenous or endogenous pigmentation from the history itself. So, exogenous pigmentations are again classified drug-induced pigmentation, which is mainly caused by tetracycline, minocycline, chloroquine, etc. Then tobacco chewing or smoking, like smoker smell noses, smoker's palate, and other smoking related pigmentation. Then heavy metal induced pigmentation like arteria, mercury poisoning, lead poisoning, bismuth poisoning, etc. Then graphite tattoo and amalgam tattoo. Then we discussed about endogenous pigmentation. So endogenous pigmentation, it is caused by endocrine disorders can cause endogenous pigmentation. There are three syndrome associated pigmentation like the fugitives, fibromatosis, and methine albright. There are infection associated pigmentation like in HIV patient, there is Kaposi sarcoma. Then there is chronic irritation associated pigmentation as in oral lichen planets, there is post inflammatory melanosis. Then there is reactive pigmentation like oral melanotic mapping and oral melanoacanthoma. Then there is neoplastic pigmentation which is benign and malignant. Benign pigmentation includes neural, whereas malignant pigmentation includes malignant melanoma and melanotic neurodermal tumor of infancy. So these are a concise version of different pigmented lesions of the oral cavity of your serious.